Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and when I'm going to the market or shopping, I do like to bring my own bags. Now, I've made lots of bags that have these small handles that we get to carry, and that's fine. However, if I'm holding bags, it's really hard to use my hands for something else. So I would like to make a crossover market bag, and that's going to leave my hands free to actually do my shopping. So the fabric I'm going to be working with today is from Splash Fabrics. It's a laminated fabric, which means we can just wipe off the dirt. And it does have a little bit of a waterproofness going on. So it is a cotton fabric that has this coating on top of it. It's a fun fabric to work with. The coating also made it so it doesn't fray. So it's an easy fabric to work with. When you buy a one yard cut, it is the one yard. However, it is 58 inches wide. So we have a lot more to work with. And I'm going to be using their free pattern to make this great tote bag. It has the straps coming off the sides so we can put it over our shoulder or use it like a crossover bag. It's a fun pattern to make and it does make up really quick. So we're going to need our fabric, some webbing, and they do recommend a snap. However, I forgot to buy my snaps, so I'm just going to use some hobby snaps, and I'll show you how we can work with these. This pattern also has a pocket that you can add in, but I find I never use the pockets in the tote bag, so I'm not going to add it, but by all means, you can add that pocket. So the first thing we're going to do is take one piece of fabric and cut it so it's 18 inches by 44 inches long. And because this fabric is laminated, it doesn't matter if you go lengthwise or widthwise. However, if you go by the 36 inch side, you're going to be able to get two 18 strips from it. So you're going to be able to make two bags. There are no special techniques that we need to do to sew on this fabric. However, I would suggest a non-stick needle. You could do a 10 or a 12. And a good all-purpose polyester thread. And instead of having your stitches at a 2.5, make them a little bit bigger. This is a cotton fabric with that coating on it, so it will sew really nicely. So this is the fabric that I've chosen for the bag. Now the bag does not have a lining, but I'm going to show you how to add a very simple lining into it. So I will use this darker one for the lining. So let's start with that outside of the bag. I have that long piece cut, 18 inches by 44 inches. Let's put those right sides together. You can pin this fabric, however, I would recommend clipping it. The holes that the needles put in will seal up in time, but if you have the clips, why not use them? The bag bottom does have boxed corners. So this little piece needs to be three and a half inches by three inches. That little extra half inch is going to be our seam allowance. So we're making a three inch square. So we have three and a half inches along this fold, and we come up three inches. I like to draw it, and then I can cut it out. I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance, and that's going to make that, that perfect three inch square. Once those two corners have been cut out, we're going to be able to sew those side seams. We're going to back stitch. Stitch all the way up and back stitch again. Any other wrinkles in the fabric, I'm just going to leave them because they will fall out on their own. But for the side seam, I do like my seams flat. Now we're going to be able to close off that bottom. So that side seam is going to match that fold along the bottom. Put your finger in on those two corners and pull, and those edges are going to match up. Match them and take them to the sewing machine, backstitch, and backstitch. And we're going to want to do both of those corners. We have the bottom done. And because this fabric does not fray, we do not need to do a treatment 
on any of those raw edges. We now get to take this top piece and fold it down two inches and press all the way around so we have a two inch hem. The bag is almost complete. What they're recommending to do is to stitch right along this edge. We do not need to fold it in. It does not fray. Then we're going to put the handles on. But I do want to add a lining. I'm going to do that same 18 inches, but this time I'm only going to cut it 40 inches. I do want it just a little bit smaller. And I'm going to sew it the same way, the side seams and that bottom. So it's going to look the same, it's just going to be a little shorter and I will not be pressing that down. Once that lining's done, we're going to be able to turn that so it's right side out and slide it into the bag. So we have the two wrong sides touching. Match up those side seams and that fabric's going to come right to the top. So that fold is going over top of that top. So those two bag bottoms match. It's just when we come up, that fabric goes all the way up to the top of the fold. So we have three layers of fabric. We have the front, the lining, and that front. Match up those side seams so we can find the centers. And I'm going to place my magnets in between these layers. So we need to make sure that they're going together and not fighting against each other. I'm going to put a little mark on each of the folds. Now I can slip that magnet in, in between those layers. Once I have those magnets in, I will test them to make sure that I do have those right pieces together while I'm able to clamp them and pin them, sort of circling to hold that in place. Now that those magnets are together and they're tested and pinned and clipped into place, I'm going to be able to sew this cuff down. I don't have to worry about that fraying. Just do a row of stitching. And to hold the magnet in, you're just going to want to sew a little square around that magnet, just to hold it in place so it doesn't shift. So I have a little square stitching around that magnet. So those magnets are now going to go together. The last thing to do is to add the handles. And the handles on this bag are going to go from that side seam to the side seam. We're not having hand handles, we're having shoulder handles. We do need to prepare the end of this nylon webbing. We're going to be able to do that with a match. So this is a nylon webbing. You can also get it in cotton. So cotton will not be treated the same as this nylon. The nylon will continually undo unless we seal this seam. So we're gonna straighten up that edge, take off all of that little fray, and then light a match or use a candle and just have the edge of that match go against the edge of that strap so it melts that edge. You only need to do ever so little. When it's cooled down, we're going to have these lovely flat edges and they're not going to unfray. Place it along that seam line. We want to make this cross over and around the edges. So we have that box with an X in the center. We're going to do that to both sides. I do like to go around a couple of times and stitch it so it's good and strong. The little match sealed it so I don't have to worry about it fraying and that extra stitching has made it nice and strong. And I have that strap put on both sides. The market tote is now done. Of course, we can have always added pockets on the front as we were going along or pockets on the inside. It has a nice big bottom, so I'm going to be able to put lots inside the bag. My hands-free market bag is now done. It goes from my shoulder over and, well, it's hands-free. This laminated fabric means I can put wet stuff in here and not worry about me getting wet. And it's food safe. 
it's a nice big bag so i'm going to be able to get a lot in it and still do some shopping for some more things regardless if you line it or you don't it is a quick easy and fun project i'll put a link in the description to the free pattern and to the market fabric from splash fabric thank you for joining me today on so very easy feel free to subscribe and come on back Let's see what we're working on next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.